Tuesday mornings, we go live to Washington, D.C. and Pulitzer Prize winning reporter David Farenthold at the Washington Post, who also happens to be our chief Texas consultant on account of he comes from there. And uh, the legislature, the Democrats, anyway, have fled again to deny a quorum to the Texas legislature, which is trying take two on this effort to uh, revise and enhance voting security. Do I have that right? That's the Republican take on it, yes. Okay. So what the the bill has changed, right? This this bill deleted a couple of the provisions that uh, Democrats found most odious, right? That's right. It is they, there had previously been a method, a, a way of taking reducing the sort of quote unquote souls to the polls hours mm-hmm. uh, used by often by black churches on Sundays the, before they had banned voting until like later in the afternoon on Sundays. That's gone. And there was also a provision that made it easier to basically overturn an election if there was allegations of fraud. That's also gone. OK, I don't think that, in the that, end, that was the creepiest part, the overturning part. Could you remind us what, what that would have involved? I think in the past you needed to be able to prove that there had been enough, uh, you know, that if the votes had been counted correctly, the election would have gone the other way. And as I recall, that they diluted that standard such that you only had to prove that there were, you know, enough votes in question without showing how they would have voted. Mm -hmm. I think it still would have been hard to overturn an election, but any move in the direction of allowing a judge to overturn an election without the most, the highest level of proof is kind of scary. Okay, so that would have been something, that would have been a, a court procedure then to, to where a judge would be empowered to throw out the results? That's right. It was, it was changing the standard of evidence that a judge might need to throw out the results in order, and order a well, new election. Okay, now what about this idea of the legislature itself overturning an election? Well, I mean, the legislature's, you know, if you believe that that interpretation of the Constitution, that every legislature you know, has the right to challenge election results from its own state. And in the the case of presidential elections, it changed the way its electors voted. Didn't matter in Texas this time because Texas was was, uh, Republican. Uh, I don't know if this has changed that or not. I think in the end, the impact of this particular bill, uh, even if it passed, would not be huge in Texas. I've been seeing people say, like, the the bigger threat for Democrats in Texas is redistricting, um, which may, you know, the Democrats have benefited as more people have moved to Texas from other states. But because they don't have control of the state, their greater numbers may give Republicans more leeway to gerrymander some new Republican seats. Huh. Well, then if, if this is not that threatening, why have Democrats decided to, to go to the wall on this? Well, two reasons. I think, A, there's nothing really for them to lose. You know, they, they don't, uh, you know, there's, there's no loss of, you know, they, they have no power anyway in Texas. The Republicans and the legislature have sort of run roughshod over them, over them for, for years, and especially recently. That was the case in this, the session that happened in the spring. There was even less consideration of Democratic ideas and priorities than usual. And I think they've decided, well, you know, it's not like there's any goodwill that we're going to lose. The goodwill is all gone yeah. anyway. Um, I, you know, they also may see this as a negotiating tactic. That if the longer they stay gone, the more they're able to get some changes made in that bill in return for coming back to the state. Is there real agenda, perhaps, to get Congress to pass some regulation of redistricting, since that is the main threat? I know they would like that. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, if they're coming to Washington hoping that that's going to happen, I think they may be disappointed. There's a lot of things, big things that are kind of under discussion in Washington. But of all of those, I think that is one of the furthest from passing. OK, let's get to your beat. Which, of course, has been uh, Donald Trump. You have relentlessly tried to uh, put a microscope to his finances. The uh, your latest piece on the Trump Organization is uh, is about uh, Alan Wesselberg, and and he's now he's resigned. So, what was the the point of that? Well, he is the the CFO of the Trump Organization, I believe. Still, uh, he certainly was the CFO of the orga- Trump Organization as of last two two weeks ago when he was indicted for tax fraud. So uh, the Trump Organization has a million little LLCs and corporations that run its individual properties. And and that's how it's administered through this sort of web of LLCs. And they've begun removing Weisselberg's name from individual LLCs, you know, the LLC that runs Trump Doral or that runs the Trump Hotel in Washington. They haven't, as far as I can tell, actually kicked him out of his job as CFO of the whole organization. So huh. the, these changes for now are kind of more a formality. Like it may, it may have posed problems for those individual LLCs to get loans or deal with regulators if they had an indicted guy on their, on, you know, on their board of directors. I mean, if they get rid of Weisselberg from the company, the Trump organization itself, 
That to me is more significant. Or if he leaves on his own accord. Remember, Weisselberg is the key witness that prosecutors want to turn against Donald Trump. Yeah. And so we're, we're alive for any sign that Weisselberg has turned or that Trump is alienating him by kicking him out, you know, at just the time when he needs him to be close, close to him. Hmm. But, but well, there is no indication, though, that he, he has, in fact, turned state's evidence. No, and we are asking all the time. And it, as far yeah. as we can tell, this seems to have been something the Trump organization did basically to reduce hassles from its lenders and vendors and regulators rather than, you know, any indication of something that Weiselberg did. Yeah. Now, I know this is somewhat off your beat, but is it is it pretty clear that that the Trump organ of Donald Trump is planning to run again? I mean, he hasn't announced it, but, but I, you know, I think it's pretty clear that he is planning that. I, mean, I, I, I think we should all assume that he's going to until he says otherwise. I don't see the downside for him and allows him to raise money. Right. And, and does anything that's going to happen in court change that? I don't think so. I mean, I, to me, the consequences of this court proceeding in New York will be for Alan Weisselberg, maybe for Trump if they if they indict him. I think that's kind of a ways off. It's if that's ever going to happen. The biggest consequences will be on the company. Remember, the Trump organization is already like, it's running on one cylinder and two wheels. You know, it's yeah. it's really you've got a lot of problems. And if the loss of Weisselberg, the extra legal fees, the legal pressure, that could cause the Trump organization to fail as a company or sort of roll up, you know, roll up and leave. I don't think it will hurt Trump as a politician or, you know, change his mind about running in 2024. Yeah. Now, in terms of what he's doing now to um, to affect the party and the candidates it chooses, does does he in fact, take a role in that? Does does he have uh, a? Um, I know he's always fundraising. Uh, he's always how much fundraising. Money does he have it as, as his, at his disposal at this point? Well, he's fundraising for himself, and I think a little bit for the Republican Party too. He's doing a fundraiser at his golf course in New York for the New York Republican Party on Wednesday tomorrow. Um, but you know, he, and he does take a role in endorsing candidates. Um, but I, the sort of you know people observing those congressional races have said that he seems to be picking based only on loyalty to himself and his big lie about the 2020 election, you know, often choosing people who are not good candidates and who may lose. So I think Republicans are sort of, you know, worried about that, that Trump seems to be choosing basically people who own based only on their loyalty to him. And it's not he's not picking people that may win in the 2022. Mm. But there's but there's no serious challenge to his leadership of the party, is there? No, I mean, the, the only person I would point to as a potential next leader is Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. Mm -hmm. He is waging this really interesting campaign where he is he's on Fox News a lot. He's trolling the liberals a lot. He's done a lot of things uh, both to, to enact conservative priorities in, for, in Florida, but also to sort of get people mad at him about coronavirus and other things. So in polls, you're starting to see him creep up, up and up. You know, I don't think he hasn't certainly hasn't said anything so far that he wants to take Trump on head on. But he may be hoping that if Trump decides not to run or if people get tired of Trump, that he's sort of anointing himself as the next guy. And he may eventually that strategy may start to take some of Trump's oxygen away as people look to a new guy rather than this guy we've, we've all heard about for six years. Hmm. All right. And one more uh, loose end. Can the Texas Rangers come to Washington, D.C. and just handcuff members of the legislature and take them back? No. Uh, this is the Democrats have done this at least once before. They went to Oklahoma, I think, in 2010 or anyway, for a previous redistricting battle. It doesn't work that way. Uh, basically, the governor has said that if they ever do come back to Texas, he will put them in the Capitol and not let them out. I but see. as long as he, they're not in, in Texas, he can't get to them. <laughs> OK, David Ferenthold, live from The Washington Post. David, thank you. Thank you.